Good evening, folks, and welcome to Evening Prayer with the people of Trinity United Church in Prince George, British Columbia. This is a special edition of Evening Prayer because it marks a milestone for us. We've spent 100 evenings together in prayer, reflecting on what's been going on in our world, the realities we've all faced, and grounding all of that in an expression and experience of holy mystery, trusting that the crucible of God's love can turn even the most challenging of human experiences into something much richer. So this evening, I found myself reflecting on a couple of things that came across my screens as I was getting ready to do this evening prayer session. Ironically, or perhaps not so ironically, they all have to do with taking a nap. That we all need time to recharge. One puts that as a spiritual practice in and of itself, the spiritual practice of taking a nap. The other acknowledges that what taking time out, taking time apart, could be for a nap, it could be to spend it in prayer, how that actually impacts us individually and what it reflects about our society, or at least our role in society. The first one came from Facebook, and a person uh, by the name of Joy Clarkson, she posts this. This is your gentle reminder that one time in the Bible, Elijah was like, God, I'm so mad, I want to die. So God said, here's some food. Why don't you have a nap? So Elijah slept, ate, and decided things weren't so bad. Never underestimate the spiritual power of a nap and a snack. There's a lot of truth in that statement. I don't know how many times somebody has said to me or I've said to somebody else, you know what, you better sleep on that. I know you've written that wonderful email that you think expresses everything that's wrong with the perfect tone in just the most amazing prose ever. But don't hit send until you've slept on it. I know you've got the perfect reply already ready for that social media comment that you saw on Instagram or you saw it on Facebook or you saw it on Twitter. But sleep on it before you hit post. Just save it as a draft for now. It's funny how when we're tired and hungry, life can look quite different to us. There's a, an expression that's very common in my family. It's that somebody has gotten hangry. That's hunger angry. In other words, they need to eat something. It's been popular in Snickers ads, right? You're upset and you're frustrated and you're annoyed and you're short-fused and whatever is going on in your perception of the way reality is, that the world is just a horrible place. Here, have a Snickers bar. Here, have a snack. Go eat something. You're hangry. The world will look better when you're not. It's true. Just like sleep. I've often reflected on that that's an underappreciated spiritual practice, if you will. What? You're fed up with your colleagues. You're fed up with your kids. You're fed up with your significant relationships. You're sick and tired of work. You're sick and tired of school. You might just need a nap. You might just need to let your brain process things unconsciously. You might just need to step off the treadmill for a minute. You might just need a, a snack. Your blood sugars might be all over the place. There is something to hitting the pause button. Whether it's to have a snack, whether it's to have a nap, or whether it's to spend time in prayer. I've shared pieces from the Reverend Cameron Trimble before, and another piece came across this week, and she also talks about naps. 
She says she discovered the work of or the site of Trisha Hershey, who runs a site called the Nap Ministry. Cameron goes on to say that what caught her attention was that on Trisha's site, there is this quote that says, rest is a form of resistance because it disrupts and pushes back against capitalism and white supremacy. Rest is resistance. Think about that for a moment. How often we laud the person who works long hours, long into the night from early in the morning, who puts all that effort in to the detriment of everything else in their lives, who participates fully in, in the system that we've created, this system of capitalism. And how taking a rest is actually a form of resistance against a system that literally uses people up and spits them out once the system is done with them. The reward is retirement. Somehow, just having a nap, somehow saying, I'm going to take five minutes and have a snack, somehow spending time in prayer that intentionally shuts that system off and to a certain degree steps outside of it, is actually a form of resistance that says there has to be a different way, a better way, a healthier way, a more holistic way for us to live our, our lives. Certainly, investing all of our sense of the creation of meaning in the products that we produce, whatever those products might be, whether it's a meal for people or a word file or content for on a website or a sermon for Sunday, whatever it is, that's all product. And if all of our sources of meaning are invested in the products that we produce, then how do we resist that temptation? Maybe the answer is in a nap. Cameron goes on to say, quote, Our lives are not defined by what we produce or how many hours we sit at our desks. The rat race is a prison from which we must finally break free. Well, it's Friday. If you work a traditional work week from Monday to Friday, the work week is coming to an end. The weekend is coming. It's just around the corner. I'm hoping that you will find rest this day. Not because it's the end of the work week, not because the weekend is almost here, but because you deserve rest. We all deserve rest. I hope you'll find some time to sit with friends or family, join them on Zoom, or wrap up in a corner with a book that you're currently reading, perhaps with your favorite four-legged friend or two-legged friend, and simply be. Simply be in the wonder and the quiet. And if you happen to drift off and drop your iPad, that's okay. Rest is a form of resistance. Rest is an act of revolution. Rest is a way of saying, I need more. And it's okay to want more, more of God's love, God's grace, God's joy, God's hope, God's presence. So after 100 days in prayer together, that is my hope for you this evening. 
that you find rest. Not just for your body, and not just for your mind, but rest for your soul. So that when you wake up tomorrow, or as you woke up today, you might feel energized to continue living into what it means to be a disciple of Christ, a follower of Jesus. Let's join together in prayer. Let's pray. Be near us, O oh God, as we invest ourselves in resting in you. Help us to calm the voices that swirl around us, all of those pieces that compete for our attention, our energy, our concentration, all of the pieces in our lives that pull us in different ways, often causing us to remain in the same place rather than making much movement one way or the other. For often, you seem to work through us in the most unlikely of ways and even through those moments when we have a nap. Indeed, throughout your story and engagement in the human narrative, there have been moments where that is exactly what you have called your followers, the people you have chosen to work through, to do, to have a nap, and to have a snack. Help us to be mindful, O oh God, that we are not at our best when we are tired or when we're hungry or when we're distracted. Help us to find moments within our days when we can unplug from the wheel that just keeps us running around and around and around again. Moments when we can ground ourselves in you. And let the things that bring us anger and fear and grief and anxiety go. Knowing that they won't disappear. And yet sometimes we just need a little space. Help us create those opportunities for others as well. Recognizing that sometimes when people say things to us, it's because they haven't had a nap or because they're hangry Help us to be generous with one another and recognize the limitations of our bodies, our minds, and our spirits. Help us see the act of stepping off the treadmill or out of the race as an expression of resistance. A refusal to see one another as human resources to be used up, cataloged, manipulated, expended, invested. Help us to see one another as much more than a resource. And in so doing, help us envision a different way of being in the world. One that doesn't place value on people based on their ability to produce, but places value on people because you value them. You have named them as good. 
as created in your image. Help us out of that resistance to build that kind of world where people are inherently valued and included and affirmed. So this evening, we name people and places and events that we would hold in prayer. We pray for Jim and Sylvia, for J.H., Paulette, Laura B., Bevan, Donna, Aaron, Bernie H., Jerry M., Dave Jenkins and his family. For Tyrell and Kyle and Joanne, Beverly M., Joe M., Gary Dean and his family. We give thanks for the life of Joy Greenlee. And we pray for her family as they mourn her death. We pray for our first responders and our armed forces personnel and their families. For the people that respond while many of us remain asleep. We pray for those who offer leadership in dealing with the pandemic and who are responsible for creating the guidelines that the rest of us try to follow. We give you thanks for the person who wears a mask when they go out in public, not because it protects them, but because it protects strangers. People they'll never know. And yet, they wear their mask. We pray for the people who are dealing with the overdose crisis in British Columbia and indeed around the world. We pray for those in the healthcare sectors of our society for those dealing with mental health and mental illness related challenges and the challenges in general of addictions. We pray for families as they send their young people off to school. And we pray for seniors We just want someone to be able to come in and sit and have coffee with them. Be near us all, O oh God. Grant us a gentle rest. One that enlivens our hearts, our minds, and our souls. one that brings rejuvenation to our bodies, our minds, and our spirits. And in so doing, help us to live lives of faithful discipleship, one act of gospel love at a time. For we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Friends, thanks again for joining with us for evening prayer here at Trinity United Church in Prince George, British Columbia. We do it every evening, Monday to Friday, at about 8 p.m. Pacific. It's our hope for you that wherever you find yourself, it's a place where you can be safe, be calm, and be community. Together, let's be the Christ and receive the Christ with and from one another. And join with me again on Monday night at about 8 p.m. Pacific when we join together for the next round of evening prayer.